So Spira Plan is an integrated solution. So if you can see my screen okay, um, it lets you manage different um, projects and programs. So for example, you might have multiple different projects going on at, at, in your organization, in the bank, and you can roll, have different projects and different teams. So I'll be working in this library information system project, but there's also other projects we have here. And all of the projects can, can roll up to a program and a portfolio view. And the risks that are managed at a project level are then visible at these higher levels. And I'll show you that. Within each of the products or projects, uh, which we call products, uh, we have lots of different features. So we actually have man tools for managing your requirements. So if you wanted to manage the requirements for a particular system or a project, you could manage that right here. We have a document management system built in, so you can manage documents. It's also got a quality assurance module, so you can manage the quality. Uh, if you're doing any software development, we've got functionality there. And then under this last section, that's where we can track issues and we can track risks. And all of that comes with the system. So even if you may be using it primarily for risk management, it does include these other features as well. And the common use case might be that uh, you, when you're talking about risks, the risks might be related to a specific requirement or a specific um, system. Uh, Similarly, when you have risks, you might also want to be able to uh, find create tests to try and reduce the risk. So the different parts of the system work together. But you can use just the risk management module by itself if you wish. Okay, so with that, let me go first of all into risk management. And um, the risk management module, uh, first of all, it populates a DAO dashboard. So I'm right now at the project level, library information system. If I click on there, It will take me to the project level dashboard. And on the project level dashboard, if I go to the general view, uh, you can see here the different risks. I'll just turn off the filter. So this is my risk make cube. And I can see here the risk impacts, catastrophic, critical, marginal, and negligible. And these are customizable. And I can see the probability, how likely it is. And so what we do is we plot on the X and Y axis the number of risks that are in each category. So for example, if I wanted to look at the most, the worst risks, those would be the ones that are certain and catastrophic. Well, luckily there are none of those. But I might look, then look over here and see, well, the ones that are most likely and marginal, so it's likely to happen, but if it happens, it's not too bad. That's a problem. Or actually this one here is quite a problem because it's possible, but it's critical. So let me look at that one. So I'll click on that one. When I click on any of these circles, it will take me into this risk management section and it automatically filters by those two values, possible, critical. And so now it's gonna show me, this is the risk that matched that intersection of the two values. So it's automatically filtering based on where I clicked in the graph. If I go back to the previous page, I click on this one, it will do the same thing, but now it's gonna filter for two different values. So you'll see different, a different risk appear. And if you have more than one risk in that circle, like the number is two or three, then you will see that as well. And then the other part we have on the dashboard is the risk register right here. That lets you see for this particular project, which are the most exposed risks. Exposed meaning it has the highest combination of impact and probability. And this one here is the one. And when you hover the mouse over, the tooltip will show you the name of the risk the description of the risk, and then the bullets will show you the action and items and mitigations that we have, the mitigations that we have actually. It is. And when I click on the risk, it will take us to that risk. Okay, so that's a risk at the project level. If I go to the program level, I can see the same thing, but now it's for all the projects in the program. We have the risk register uh, right here. And we can go all the way up to the top of the entire system, and that will show me all of the projects in all of the programs we have, and gives me the top risks for, the, for every, every product we have. This view is also going to show me information from other parts of the system, so I can see my project's progress and completion. So as I mentioned, it's more than just a risk management; it also includes project management. So you can track how each of the pro each of the programs and projects and see what's their completion and what's their schedule, and the risks is right here on that overall dashboard. We also have a timeline view, so you can see all the projects and the schedule and how much work is left to do, for example. So again, it's an integrated risk system as part of a project management system. Um, so let's go click on one of the risks. So if we click on one of the risks, that will take us into the risk. 
And this is what a risk looks like. I'm going to create a new one and show you the whole life cycle. But an existing risk looks like this, where you can see the name of the risk, the type, business, financial. These are all customizable. And you can see the workflow operations. And you, from these values, we choose the probability right here. And we choose the critical the impact. And that's used to calculate the exposure. We assign the risk to a person who's considered the owner. And we can assign a review date. We can also add custom fields. We haven't done that, but we can also add custom fields here if you wanted to customize the risk form. Uh, this is the description field. That's where you enter the description of the risk. We can take rich text. You can put in comments, pictures, images, uh, tables, lists, anything you want you put in here. And then under that, we write the mitigations. That's how we're mitigating the risk. And we can put a review date for each mitigation. Under that will be the comments where we can review the risk. And in the task section, that's where you can write the create the action items that will be used to, to actually implement the mitigations. And we can track those in the project plan under tasks, which I'll show you. And then the last part is you can also look in the history and you can see uh, any changes made to the risk. So there is a full audit trail. So that's an overview of, of the risk system. Let's look at some of the administration and then we'll create a risk and move it through the workflow. So if we go here to the main menu, let's go here and look at the um, template we're in right here. Under there, we have risks, we have workflow status type, probability impact and custom properties. That's where you can customize the work, the risks. And so if I'll just show you this, you go in here, you can go to the status. That's where you'll see all the different risk statuses. And we've implemented the PRINCE2 methodology for risk management as our default, but you can customize this. You can go here to the type section. These are all the different types of risk that you have, and you can categorize those by different types. And these are again all customizable. And depending on which type you choose, it may drive a different workflow. So you, for example, a business risk might have a different workflow than a technical risk. And if we now go over here to the workflow section and I click on steps, you can see this is our default workflow. We identify the risk, what we analyze it. Once it's analyzed, it becomes analyzed. From analyzed, we evaluate it, it becomes evaluated. Once it's evaluated, we either reject the risk or treat it. When it's treated, it now becomes a mitigated open risk to be managed. And ultimately, when the risk is open, if we can fully mitigate it, we might close it. And that's the typical life cycle of a risk. At any given status in that life cycle, we can specify which fields are hidden, i.e. they're not visible, which ones are read-only, which we call disabled, and which fields are required. We can do the same thing for any custom fields we've added, which we, we haven't done. And then the other thing we can do is also customize the critical KPIs, the probabilities, certain likely, possible, unlikely, and rare. We can change the color that goes with them using the color picker. You can change the score value. That's used to multiply to create the exposure. And so this is a linear scale. Some customers prefer a log, a, like an exponential scale where you can do it like this. So that way it's, it's a geometric scale. It's really up to you. And then there's the display order right here. Same thing you can do with the, the impact as well. Also, you can have custom fields right here. If you add a custom field, it will appear in the risk form. And you just click on the button to add the custom field, choose the type, and then it becomes a field in the display. So that's some of the configuration. The next thing we'll do is let's go ahead and actually create a risk. So I'll do new, create a new risk. And let's say this is a technical risk, and the risk might be the system will not comply with PCI DSS 4.0. So let's say it's some kind of technical risk like that. And the description might be when we release the new product, it may not comply with the latest security standards that will be around next year. So a risk is typically something that has not happened yet but it's going to happen in the future. You can associate risk with a specific version of a system or product. You can specify, you can also connect it to a specific part of the system, if that makes sense. And then you would save this and you now have a new risk. 
the next person would log in and I would just use the same user, but in real life, someone else would log in and they would then analyze the risk. And if they hit save, it's going to warn them, they have to enter some values. So they now have to assign it to someone. So I'll assign it to Fred to own. I then assign it to a particular probability. Well, it's likely that standard is going to come about and it's critical if that happens. So hit save. That's a pretty high risk. And now what you might do is then assign that to say to Fred, like I just did, and Fred may then review it and add a mitigation. So mitigations are things that will be used to reduce the risk. And so one mitigation might be we could you know, test or you know, implement the PCI standards earlier than necessary. That might be a mitigation to that risk. Another mitigation might be explore getting a waiver from the standards. You can have multiple mitigations for a same risk. And when you've added, when you've added the mitigations, um, you would then could add a comment, something like, um, I have added mitigations based on that. Let me get that out of the way. Based on that, I am downgrading the likelihood or probability. So you might go in here and then say, okay, well, based on that, it's not as likely anymore. It's now just possible. Hit save. When you do that, the exposure score drops automatically for using the calculation and the history contains the changes. Notice that the history includes both mitigations and the risk itself, so which is nice. So it's all there in the audit trail. The last part would be we want to actually do the work. So let's go create some tasks. So I'll create a new task. One would be a management task, which would be to uh, submit a waiver request. And these are usually tied, they don't have to be, but they're usually tied to the, uh, the mitigations. That's a pretty high. I'll assign that to Fred. That's fine. It's already assigned to Fred. And the second task would be, uh, what was it? We're going to, oh, the standard. So try experiment coding to the new standards. That's a development task. So we'll, we'll leave that. I'm going to assign that to Bernard. Hit save. We've now got two tasks. They're both marked as yellow because the start date's right away. We could change the start date. So, so in the task management part of the system, if I close some of these tabs down, I can see these tasks. And these tasks are now managed by the project management side of the system. And you can now assign these to different people. So you could then change the task and assign that to someone, the start date, the end date, all of that stuff is now measured right here in the system. So we could say, assign this task to Fred, and then Fred could start the task, and you, you know, this is the waiver request, and maybe the comment would be submitted the request, you know, waiting to hear back, like that. And we could say, We've spent, uh, you know, two hours submitting the request, filling the form out. Oops. And the remaining effort is, you know, we've got four hours, five, uh, three hours left. Hit save like that. So you can track how much time is spent on these tasks and the progress. Oh, and the end date's probably going to, yeah, that's fine. The end date's to June 16th. So that's how you would do some of the task management as well. And that task is then tied back to that risk. So if you go here and hit refresh, you can see this is the, the risk, and then this is the task progress against the two different mitigations. Uh, and then lastly, to look at all the tasks in completion, you could that task goes into the master task tracking system. So if you assign that task to someone, that might be something they have less time for other things. So you can go in here and you could always see the specific releases and, and phases and sprints, depending on you, how you set things up. And you can see here's our tasks, and you can see the different tasks in the system, and you can track them in a, in a Gantt chart view. So that's an overview of the risk creation, risk triaging, mitigation, and moving it through the life cycle. The other things you can do are run reports. So if you wanted to get a report of all the risks, you could do that using the risk reports. You just go to the risk report section, and I could do a detailed risk report, which would be uh, like a PDF or a MS Word. So let's do PDF. And I could, I don't want the change history. I just want the task mitigations. And I can run the report. And that will generate a report of all the risks together with what's going on with each of them.
and that will be an example risk report which I'll just make a bit smaller. So um, that's an overview of the risk management portion. Thanks so much for attending and uh, if you have any questions just let us know.